Welcome to NASDAQ Trade Talks. I'm Jill Malandrino, Global Markets Reporter at NASDAQ. Joining us for this segment, we have Sandeep Sahai. He's the CEO of Clearwater Analytics to discuss how technology will play a role in asset management. Sandeep, it's great to have you with us. Welcome to Trade Talks. Thank you. Thank you for having me on Trade Talks. I appreciate it. You got it. And to start off, give us an idea of why you're currently seeing so much volatility in the tech markets and what we should expect to see in early 2023. Yeah, it's all the rage, isn't it? So when you think about what's affecting the markets, the first thing obviously is interest rates. You know that already. But just to give you a sense of this, Jill, if you look at our clients on our platform and you look at a subsection of them, the yield from that has gone from 1% four months back to 3.4%. And so we see all these pla- these clients on our platform all the time. And when your yield changes th- that much, then you think about the receptivity of buying stocks or the attractiveness of buying stocks, it changes, right? And so that is one big driver, I think, of what's going on. The second one, obviously, is inflation. When you have inflation at the rates we have right now, then you can obviously understand what our clients have done, Jill, is they move to alternative assets. And those so- obviously have a slightly better rate. So what you've seen is, as inflation has continued to rise through the last 12, 15 months, clients have moved to alternative assets that again impacts the stocks, right? So those two things have been pretty massive, if you will. One other point I'd make about tech stocks, since you talked about tech stocks, we are experts, look at my age, I've been here for a while. We are experts at over-indexing on one thing. And in the last five years, we have over-indexed on growth, growing at any cost. So when things change and volatility has been introduced by inflation changing, by the interest rate change, guess what? People get caught out. And so that leads to a massive amount of volatility. So I feel like that people just have to change in how they think and approach this. That's a great point that you make opportunity um, and growing at, at any cost, of course, you know, the cost of capital getting more expensive to your point. So if volatility is likely to continue in the near term, what's your advice for companies and investors like? Yeah, you know, I, I always try and fall back on my age and that's not a fair thing. It's because I've seen cycles and we have seen cycles. So whenever I talk with people, I say, look, revenue growth never goes out of fashion, but ne- neither does profitability and neither does cash flow. And so the smarter approach always is the balance between these three things. And when you allow other things, including you know, the analysts and the media and everybody else in your stock price to over-index on one thing, you're exposing yourself. And so when I meet company CEOs, my th- advice is three things. One is right, find that right balance. It is so important. The second thing I tell them is, or people always tell me, oh, don't worry, we're not making money right now, Jill, but we're going to make money in the future. Okay, that does not happen. It's like children at home. If they don't understand the value of money, it's very hard to learn that later on. That's the point here. Companies that don't make money, I feel don't know how to make money. And they find it very, very hard, I think, later on to do that. So that's a second piece of advice. And the third one is, I don't know, maybe it's people matter. You can't just hire thousands of people when times are a little bit good and lay off thousands of people when they go bad. So my advice to company CEOs, the colleagues I meet is, look, look out for those three things. And then for investors, Jill, I got two pieces of advice. One is, everybody's gonna talk the talk. Look for demonstration of having done that before. Have companies been successful with balancing these three things of revenue growth and profitability and, and uh, cash flow or not? And, and look for when things go change on a dime, is management able to adapt? As long as you look for those two things in the history, not in what they are saying, I, I think you'll come out ahead. So again, that's how I think it doesn't necessarily mean it's right, but but I do I do believe that. Uh, Sandeep, like yourself, having gone through a number of, of cycles, um, we seem to fall into this every 10, 15 years where we kind of dial back from the fundamentals and, and thinking about the balance sheet and profitability over perceived valuation. So it's always a great reminder to have, and hopefully this next generation of investors will learn something from you know, the 2020, 2022 um, era. But let's switch gears a bit here. Um, at the top, I mentioned technology and the role it plays with asset management in 2023. Tell us more about that. Yes, yeah, so if I can just be a little provocative, Jill, what, what is the return on your portfolio? So if you think about yourself, you may understand your stock portfolio. What's the return on your total portfolio? And I would submit to you, you probably don't know. 
And then I want to ask you the second question. There are many other jails who have similar amount of assets as you do. How do you compare with them? Do you know? And the answer to those two things is probably not. Technology jail can change all of that. If you are a Clearwater client today, not you, but let's say there's an insurance company, we can tell them how they do in relation to other insurance companies of a similar size and complexity. Technology can enable that. The other thing technology can do is really get you to understand the return at a very, very granular level. And that's why I think asset managers would do well to provide that transparency to their clients. And you can't do that with the old technology, Joe. To think that you can have separate technologies for every asset class or mortgages and equities and somehow bring it all together, I don't think works. And so my eventual goal is to have people like you as clients so that you can come on a platform and get every day, just like you look at a ticker index and say, ah, that's my return for today. And you really would like clients to be able to do that and say, my return is so much. And other people who look like me, their return is much better and what do I need to do to get that kind of return? So I feel technology can enable all of that over the next two, three, five years. Another big obstacle for asset managers is the growing need to measure carbon footprints and ESG metrics. Is yeah. this something managers can use technology to address? Yeah, absolutely. If I can you know, go back 10 years and I had the privilege of running a company, everyone used to ask me in town halls about you know, benefits and compensation. What do you think people ask me today about? They ask me about climate. They ask me about diversity. They asked me about social consciousness. What are we doing for communities? So I think asset managers who recognize that trend and where this is going, I think will be very, very well served. And to give you a sense of how prevalent that is, 55% of our clients, only 55, have any plan or policy around ESG. 41% of that, Jill, is on spreadsheets. People manage ESG off spreadsheets. How, just how crazy is that? Yeah. And the last point is, so you ask people, why don't you do it? Guess what? They're going to say, most of the time, it is because data is not available. You can't measure it comprehensively. Again, technology can solve that. So I'm a big proponent of technology exists, use it. And the faster you move to where the puck is going, the better for you. You know this is going to be bigger. Look at where the millennials are. So get ready and get ahead of it rather than waiting for it to get there and then trying to scramble off spreadsheets or whatever that might be. And finally, Sandeep, let's talk about cloud technology. What should asset managers be on the lookout for this year? Yeah, if you think about, again, back to yourself and myself, our tolerance, Jill, for something not being available is gone to zero. We don't like to log on to an application and say, oh, I'm not available. You and I can't tolerate that. And the point is that every company cannot be an expert at full scale systems, which never go down or are fully secure. The point I'm making is cloud technologies already have solved that problem. So the faster, again, same thing about where the puck is going, think about where it will be 10 years from now. No one's gonna have on-prem software gel. Technology is gonna take you to the cloud. You should embrace it, embrace the change instead of trying to fight the change. So again, you know, I'll give you another data point. More than 100 clients moved to the Clearwater Water Platform in the last 12 months, a cloud platform, which is single instance, multi-tenant. So again, we, we feel like the forward thinking asset managers will move to the cloud, they will move to ESG, they will move to a solutions which are comprehensive and, and provide that level of transparency to people like yourselves, to people like Delphi, to people like insurance companies, asset managers, asset owners. And uh, so, you know, our thing, come on, let's do it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. Well, we appreciate the insight, Sandeep. Thanks for joining us on Trade Talks. I'm Jill Malentrino, Global Markets Reporter at NASDAQ. Thank you again, Jill. Thank you so much.